And welcome back. I'm pre-recording this for Friday because apart from Shang-Chi, which review I'll do Friday as well. Uh, I'm seeing that later tonight with my girlfriend. We're having a bit of a date night. We're both super pumped for that. I've got nothing else to do this week right now. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I got the Zon Pacto video to do, but that's about it uh, for them doing that afterwards. But who would win? Uh, this one comes from Star Chan. It's actually a very interesting one. She, I'm assuming Star Chan. Chan is usually a uh, female suffix. Um, I assume they, um, when they asked for Nicktoons versus Cartoon Network, they did originally mean what I'm about to do. Literally, who wins? Nicktoons or Cartoon Network? And I mean that as the whole. But initially when I saw that, and pl uh, plus I just had so many other you know requests beyond that, just got lost in the fray, I did wonder... Do they, do they just mean for me, like, between particular Nicktoon or Cartoon Network characters versus Nicktoon uh, Network characters or Nickelodeon characters? But I figured, no, 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 let's go all out here. Which do I think, which one do I think was the better of the two programs, two shows? Now, keep in mind, we have to, A, understand this is completely 100% my opinion. Like, because there's no 100% consensus on anything. Ever. Very rarely is there ever. Like that horrible 3D nutcracker. I think that's a pretty much 100% consensus. That thing is terrible. Um, at least by the critics there was. But um, I'm sure... But there's always someone who's going to dislike something. There's always someone who's going to like something. So no matter how far you are on one side of the fence or other, it's all it's all subjective. My opinion is no more valid than your opinion. But you're here to hear my opinion, so I appreciate that. Uh, but also, we have to qualify what counts as a Nicktoon. And really, I think the basic answer to that is, if it's on Nickelodeon, or was on Nickelodeon, and was a cartoon, it qualifies as a Nicktoon. So, you know, everything you see in this picture right now, this is just the, the small end of it. Hey Arnold, Angry Beaver, Spongebob, Rugrats, uh, Zayder Zim, all those are cartoons. Avatar is also a Nicktoon. Now, Avatar, I could at least see an argument against, because Avatar's was kind of beyond a Nicktoon at that uh, like, beyond anything they had really done from a animation standpoint, a writing standpoint, a character standpoint, but it's a cartoon that was on Nickelodeon. It's not an anime, despite the fact it clearly took influence from anime, uh, and it, it is a Nicktoon. So, um, really, we're going to just be comparing and contrasting the shows overall, you know, their history, how well they did. And, I mean, both uh, Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon have been around for a good long while. Now, that being said, Nickelodeon... Uh, uh, sorry, Nickelodeon launched, we're, Nickelodeon's been around actually a lot longer than a Cartoon Network has. Um, a, they, um, they been or they did apparently a test, uh, channel first tested on December 1st of 1977 as an experiment local channel in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, on April uh, 1st, 1979, channel expanded into a national network named Nickelodeon. The first program broadcast in Nickelodeon was Pinwheel, a preschool series created by Dr. Vivian Horner, who was conce who conceived the idea for the channel itself. At its launch, Nickelodeon was commercial-free and mainly featured educational shows. By 1984, the channel began accepting traditional advertising and introduced more entertainment-focused programming. In, in 1988, the network launched a weekday morning block for preschoolers called Nick Jr. Surprisingly, Nick Jr. came before any of the main Nicktoons came along which carried Pinwheel and other educational series around at the same time. Nickelodeon started to invest in its own original animated shows, which eventually premiered in 1991. So, while Nickelodeon has been around much longer than um, than Cartoon Network has, by a huge factor, by the way, by nearly two decades, they actually, in terms of their cartoon history, really started off basically and say for Nickelodeon started Nicktoons started one year earlier than Cartoon Network did, which started in 1992. Uh, so they actually are pretty even in terms of how long they've been around. Now then, in terms of what actually existed, oh god, god fuck, sorry, I just saw one of the things that's currently a choir program they're currently airing, Kyo, screw you. <laughs> uh, but anyway, in terms of what they actually, you know, had in comparison... Let's go year by year, basically, because I think that's going to be pretty good for comparing exactly um, what we're really going to be looking at here. Now, I grew up, obviously, in the... I'm, I'm Obviously, it's not the great term. Not everyone knows how old I am. I'm 31. I grew up in the 90s, so I was actually very aware 
of both Cartoon Network and I grew up a Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon in the early years. For I want to say the first decade um, of of both shows, I, uh, both um, yeah, both shows. Um, and honestly, I was still watching it well into mid two thousands because that back because that's when you know Avatar: Last Airbender, Danny Phantom came out. Uh, that's and uh, you know Fairly Odd Parents had been around for a couple years at that point, so I was still watching them. Uh, I was still watching Nicktoons at that point. Um, uh, so yeah, but let's see. So in 1991, you had Doug Rugrats and the Red and Stimpy Show. Those were your first real, um, uh, your first real, you know, forays, if you will, into the animation realm for Nickelodeon. And if you want my personal opinion, I remember loving Rugrats and Doug as a kid. Um, now, don't get me wrong, I am looking at now from the guise of someone in his early 30s. And Ren and Stimpy, even as a kid, I'm like, I like watching this, but I have no idea what the fuck is going on. <laughs> um, looking back now, and having revisited the shows in, in more recent, I haven't, like, done it, like, today, but, like, in more recent years, I have revisited some episodes. Rugrats, I'm like, why did I like, I mean, it, this is really, this is, like, kid, kid stuff. Like, jeez. I mean, then again, I was a kid kid thing. Doug, surprisingly, even though it's kind of bland, I can still kind of get behind a little bit. Uh, I, I have no real, uh, not, I have nothing really against Doug, honestly. Uh, but then there's the Ren and Stimpy show, which even now, I really can't get behind Ren and Stimpy anymore. Only because I've seen that horribly messed up version of it um, with Stimpy, that horrible messed up cartoon where uh, Ren is like a psychopath that just loves to hurt me. I'm like, at this point, and they did like they did the adult version of the uh, of the uh, and them too. I think where they were legitimately a couple, and like it, and Spike. So I'm like, I, I yeah, like I didn't really even like them. I watched it because it was there. That's that was the thing. Now, granted, I was I'm 31, so I was born in 89. Uh, so I actually really didn't watch a lot of the early stuff, mind you, because I didn't really start watching Nickelodeon probably until I was like four or five. Because I was just too young at that point. I, I just, I wasn't going to be able to process any of that crap. So really, I wasn't watching anything until about 1994, 1995. And at that point, we also had Rocco's Modern Life and All Real Monsters. And I loved both of those shows. And to this day, I still love both of them. I love Rocco's Modern Life because I think the nostalgia could have put it best on point. It was kind of like a toned down Ren and Stimpy, a bit more of a kid-friendly Ren and Stimpy. The characters were more likable than Ren or Stimpy were. Because uh, Ren was just horrifyingly mean and uh, cynical. But that was kind of fun, I admit. But Stimpy was too nice, naive, and stupid. With Rocco, you have Rocco as the sensible one, the neurotic one, Filbert, the heifer, the cow, who could be annoying but still lovable, the big heads. Uh, you know, I love that hippo. How dare you? I love that hippo. Uh, you know, the two uh, the two geckos. I think they're supposed to be geckos. Uh, I love Ren. I love Rocco's Modern Life. I still love Rocco's Modern Life. And they did, like, I think a, uh, a relaunch of it a while ago. Um, that, that Obviously, that didn't last very long. The, and the reason I haven't really talked much about Cartoon Network is, honestly, because Cartoon Network started out around 92. They didn't have much. They had uh, they had the Moxie show, which I don't even remember what the Moxie show was. What the hell was a Moxie show? Okay, yeah, I, uh, early freaking CG. No, I did not watch the Moxie show. Space Ghost from Coast to Coast. Now, I, in later years, I've grown to really like the idea of Space Ghost to Coast to Coast. But I... um. I actually never watched it, sadly. What a cartoon. I think this is basically just a... Was, uh, was this like the Oh Yeah cartoon thing? Where it's basically... Um, yeah, it was an anthology series. Which basically they were kind of like throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall. So it stuck. So there wasn't much coming out. So in the early years, leading to, uh, up until about 1995, 1996. Yeah, I'm sorry, but Nickelodeon had the had the edge. They always had the edge. They just had more programming and they had better programming. Yeah, Space Coast 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 was great, but it was definitely designed more for a mature audience, despite being Cartoon Network. But then let's go into 96 through 97. 96 through 97, you had only three. You had three newcomers with uh with hey, uh, Nickelodeon with Hey Arnold, which to this day I like Hey Arnold. Though, my mind, basically, I've often considered doing videos on Hey Arnold, where I'm like, you know, Arnold actually, is, is Arnold just kind of, like, looking for attention? 
Like, when you really think, is, is he not as dumb as, as smart as we kind of give him credit for? I've considered doing videos on that, because I look back and I'm like, yeah, this is Adam, this is Adam, this is Adam. But, then you had, but anyway, you had that, you had A. Arnold, you had uh, the Ang Angry Beavers, which I, that is one of my most favorite shows on, cart on uh, Nickelodeon. One of my favorite Nicktoons was the Angry Beavers. I loved it. The Angry Beavers, and I don't know what it was about. It was the I think it might have been the combination of the animation style, and it had to have been the characters. Norm and Daggett are some of the most fun characters ever for me. I love the Angry. If I could find the whole box out of the Angry Beavers, I'd buy it in a heartbeat. Same with Darkwing Duck, but in a heartbeat, I'd buy that. I loved the Angry Beavers, and they had Kablam! Uh, and I, if, uh, yep, if, yep, uh, Kablam was basically the anthology series. That basically had, um, oh, I can't remember the name of them, uh, the two characters that was hosting it. But they, you had, like, the Action League now, or Sniz and Fondue. I think that's where Angela Anaconda got her start. Uh, Prometheus and Bob. Uh, there was a couple other ones they had on there. But I, Kablam! was a really fun show, absolutely. I, I, lo I really like Kablam! But that is when... Um, that is when Cartoon Network actually started to take off more with their content. Dexter's Lab, which to this day is one of the most is one of the most product is probably the prodigal son of Cartoon Network. Maybe that was the true beginning of Cartoon Network. Uh, Johnny Bravo, <laughs> man, I'm pretty. Like who doesn't love Johnny Bravo? Come on, Johnny Bravo. Uh, Cow and then you also had Cow and Chicken and I Am Weasel and. Yeah, okay, I'll admit, that one, those ones, those were weird ones, because they were made by the same people. Those were made by, and they crossed over, too. I, I don't know what it was about, though. They were interesting, but not the greatest. Dexter's Lab and Johnny Bravo, however, for me, though, that's like top-tier Cartoon Network right there, and that definitely rivals anything Nickelodeon had at the time, because while I like Doug... Rugrats, I, I, I've lost my chase for. And Ren Stimmy, I'm like, okay. And I love Rock Who Is My Life. I really like Hey Arnold. And I love Angry Beavers. I love Johnny Bravo and I love Dexter's Lab. And the fan, when you actually ask about like fan bases, like between the two, Dexter's Lab stands out on top more than any of them, honestly. Like, uh, you know, if so, you actually went uh, go, uh, TT, get out of my laboratory towards someone. I was like, what does this button do? Like, someone actually usually gets that. Like, you put in a room of, like, ten, like, people within that kind of age range. Most of those some of the people are going to know that reference. Whereas, Movie Fall Ball Head, yeah, you you might know that reference. But Angry Beavers, like, oh, spoot. That's, I think, the only one. Or Dagger Wagger. Like, I, I can remember that stuff. But I don't know how many people do. And, like, Rock is where a lot. It's like, Garbage Day is a very dangerous day. <laughs> like, I... Sure, but I, I can't rethink of anyone who really remembers all real monsters to uh, that degree. And that is actually something, going back to Rand Stimpy, that I'll give Rand Stimpy credit for, is that a lot of people remember uh, Rand Stimpy's like, you freaking idiot! Stimpy, and of course, the infamous, happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy. Uh, I'll teach your mother suck eggs! I told you I'd do it, but you wouldn't believe me! Why wouldn't you believe me? Like, people remember that. And if you can have that long-lasting of, you know, an impact on someone, that means a lot. So let's go into now 89, 98 to 2000. Uh, let's start actually with Cartoon Network because they had a few new programs. A little show called The Powerpuff Girls, which, you know, was the freaking Powerpuff Girls. I think that one kind of just spoke for itself. Like, Powerpuff Girls, even guys like Powerpuff Girls. It's like, there's something just really fun and cu it's cute. But it had fun action, had humor, and it had some lessons in it, too. Like, and fun, great characters. Mojo, Jojo. And, of course, the infamous him. Uh, and, of course, Fuzzy Lumpkins, um, the Gang Green Gang. Um, oh, God, I'm trying to remember all of them. Uh, like, I, I can't remember all. Some of them were just, like, character of the week uh, characters. Um, and then, obviously, one of the other big ones was Ed, Ed, and Eddie. And Ed, Ed, and Eddie is like, again, that's one of the ones that just seems to last. You know, Ed, 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 and Eddie. Boo, 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 boo. I'm not going to try to whistle it. Like, yeah, I can't do that kind of whistling. I can whistle, but I just can't whistle that good. 
Uh, the, then there was one apparently called Mike and Lou. Mike, Lou, and Og. Is this what I think it was? Oh, this is the one where it was the, like the natives on the island. Uh, I don't remember anything about that show. And then Ozzy, another big fan favorite, which only lasted three seasons. That's the thing that sup- or, uh, astounds me. It, or four seasons, sorry. Four seasons. Courage the Cowardly Dog only had four seasons, whereas Ed and Nettie's had like ten. Um, so, uh, yeah, it kind of, it surprised, I'm not lying, I'm not going to lie, it surprised me it only lasted that long. It really did. But Carriage the Cowardly Dog is another one that's just a fan favorite to everyone. Whereas in through 98 to early 2000, we had Cat Dog, Cat Dog, Alone in the World with a Good Cat Dog. Uh, oh yeah, cartoons! That was basically kind of like the anthology they did. The Wild Thorn Bears, and I remember watching the Wild Thorn Bears. I don't know, something about Wild Thorn Bears now. Eliza just comes off to me as a old dumbass. Like, she's just so insane. Oh, ah, Komodo dragons are the biggest reptile in the world! No, they're not even close to the biggest reptile in the world. What the hell are you talking about? And now you're going to just go, Oh, yeah, we've been looking for you all day! It's like, okay, you, this thing is a monster that eats, that has actually been documented eating people. And you're just like, Hi! Like, what? Yeah, Eliza always just came off to me like a dumbass. Even back then, I'm like, What? Because I, like, even remember as a kid, because I'm a big animal guy, and I was a much bigger animal guy as a kid. I watched him because I love animals, and I'm like, that's not right, Eliza. <laughs> but anyway, Rocket Power, we're riders on a mission. I actually liked Rocket Power quite a bit. And then there was As Told by Ginger, which was basically Doug 2.0. That's actually what, it, it was It was basically a female dog. It was basically just a girl living her life and the wacky shenanigans of the people around her, particularly her, like her brother, um, and his friend, uh, Hoodsy, uh, and, and he had a petrified eyeball and all that, but you know, she was the regular one, but you know, with wacky shenanigans, her friends were a little odd, but that's, you know, normal for a lot of these, like, yeah, it was just, it was just weird, it, and I, weirdly enough, I liked it a lot more than Doug, maybe because the animation style was a lot better, to be fair, but, um, uh, yeah, I, it was weird, I'm sorry, it was just, it was a weird show for me at that time, uh, but I liked it, and then moving on into the early 2000s, you had Invader Zim, which has a huge ravenous fan following, despite the fact it only lasted two seasons, um, yeah, that's, that's what really, like, that, that's what really, uh, is kind of messed up for some of these shows, like, last only two seasons, Fairly Odd Parents, which lasted 16 years. Now, that being said, they fully admit that they they went, uh, they went jumped the shark many years ago, uh, or many years prior uh, into the series. But yeah, Fairly Odd Parents, which was, again, beloved Chalk Zone. I liked Chalk, Chalk Zone. And that got eight seasons. Great for it. I liked Chalk Zone. The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius, lasted four seasons, but it was their first real CGI show. Uh, but you know what? Good. It, it, honestly, it wasn't bad. It, it, Based off that movie we got from it, they took the premise and they at least tried to make it interesting. And I think they did a good job. It was it was an engaging show. All grown up, basically adult rug well, adult rugrats. All grown up rugrats. Only it surprisingly uh got five seasons. Figured that out. Um But um yeah, uh I a lot of people don't really tend to uh <laughs> gravitate towards that one as much. My life as a teenage robot. I remember that one as well. That was okay. Danny Phantom and Avatar The Last Airbender, though. 2004, 2005. That is, like, really where, um... That's really where, like, the real meat of, like, good, good, um... Car- uh, cartoon Network... Nickelodeon, sorry. Nickelodeon came from. Like, no doubt. Like, that... Avatar The Last Airbender, I think you could really just make the argument. It's probably the best thing. Best, like, overall st- creative story show. Care, everything like that... Nickelodeon ever did. I, uh, Danny Phantom is great. I mean, there's a lot of great shows. I love a lot of these shows, but ultimately, yeah. So, and I'm going to cut off right there for the time being, because it's going to be very telling where we go from there. So that's around 2005. So what did N- Cartoon Network have at that point At two, by 2005? Uh, Sheep in the Big City, which I remember the name. Re- yeah, I remember that show, but I didn't watch it. Time Squad, which I loved Time Squad. Time Squad was awesome. Uh, I don't care what anyone says. Time Squad was awesome. Um, yeah, uh, so, absolutely Time Squad rules. Uh, the, the, you know, uh, oh god, what was that? 
bucks speedman or something like that. And like, I got to get the kid to help with like, I love Titans Squad. Titans Squad. And then again, what you could probably argue is the pinnacle of Cartoon Network, maybe at the time. Samurai Jack. Come on, Samurai Jack. That was some of the most awesome storytelling. That was their avatar. That was their avatar, The Last Airbender. And, I mean, you get Jaku, the stories you were telling, the action, the animation, despite being looking kind of cheap, they also did a really great aesthetic. Samurai Jack is awesome. Just And, and then they did the fans, uh, did the fans justice. <clears throat> Or get, uh, did the fans? Well, uh, didn't do the fans dirty. They rewarded the fans by finishing out the series about two years ago. I want to say. So yeah, Grim. The Adventures of Grim, Grim and Evil. Is that Grim and Vandy or uh, Grim? Is it supposed to be Grim and Evil? Grim. Okay. Yeah, it is. It's actually known as the Grim Adventures of uh, Billy and Mandy. That's what it, is. it says. Grim and Evil, but Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, which again has a very big following. And I. Uh, oh no, no, wait, no, it's not. That's not. There's those are two different things. Hold on, Grim and Evil. Uh, it consists of two segments, which are eventually spin off. Oh, okay. They were, it was a spin off show that basically turned into the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. My bad. I was actually going to wear that. But the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, which again, went for four years. That's, that's uh, one well and truly known. Whatever happened to Robot Jones? That, see, okay. I remember that show now. I didn't watch it, but I remember it. Uh, don't really care about that much, to be frank. Codename Kids Next Door, which I loved Codename Kids Next Door. Love Billy and Mandy. Uh, Evil Con Carne. I do not remember. Uh, I do not. Re oh, oh, it's a spinoff show. Okay. I think what it will. I, I remember now. I remember now. Because of the evil like, character. It, it, it's its own. I remember the show now. I do. Okay. Uh, Star Wars The Clone Wars. Uh, or Star Wars Clone Wars. Now, if I remember, this is the, yeah, this is the Aronofsky one. The guy who did Samurai Jack. And that's the one I really like. Megas XL, man. Who doesn't love Megas XL? Come on. Only glasses this season, but it was awesome. These guys basically turn a robot, a car, their car into a robot. Uh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Hi, hi, Puffy and uh, Amy Yumi. The Life and Times of Juniper Lee. Uh, oh, I remember that. Um, Sunday Pants, I don't even know, Camp Laszlo, okay, I remember Camp Laszlo, My Gym Partner's a Monkey, and then the last one in the debut with 2005, which is where I'm kind of cutting it off for the moment, is Ben 10, which I love Ben 10, and Ben 10 Alien Force, the rest of the series, um, and Ultimate Alien, the rest of the series, not so much, I mean, they're still cool and everything, because it's still got the lore, but not so much, so at this point in time, it seems like, you know, they're pretty even, I would probably, even though they don't have anywhere near as much content at this point, surprisingly, I would actually say be, uh, their condensed amount uh, is, I would actually go with Nicktoons, because I think it's very difficult to really compare, like, their top tier, like, Avatar and Samurai Jack <laughs> together. I, man, that, actually, I say that a lot, that is really freaking tough. I think, though, I would argue Avatar only because they gave us a complete series, um to begin with, whereas uh, Samurai Jack, we had to wait for that, um, and because it was, they were younger kids, it did tailor itself to a younger audience who could identify more with the characters, but, I mean, I, in terms of, it's, a, it's highly debatable, I think, but in my, for my money, in terms of, like, condensed content, which I actually enjoyed overall more than, like, some of the other content, which I just didn't even know existed, I might lean towards, cart uh, towards Nickelodeon, I, in fact, I would lean towards Nickelodeon, as of 2005, however, that's where the dynamic shifts. Because after after Avatar Last Amateur, we had what? Something called Cat Scratch? What the hell is Cat Scratch? Uh, I have no idea what that is. So I, the X's, which is a super, which I don't remember that at all. Didn't last as more than a season. Uh, El Tigre, The Adventures of Manny Rivera, I do know about that. Tack and the Power of Juju, actually, that actually had gotten a TV series? Holy crap. I, cause I played the game. Um, and I liked the game. I never finished the game either. Um, Backyard Barnyard, oh, Back in the Barnyard, oh god, yeah, that. The Mighty Bee, I don't even know what that is. The, um, The Penguins of Madagascar, Fanboy and Chum Chum, Planet Sheen, Tough Puppy, 
Wix, Winx Club. Now, the Winx Club actually does have a fan base. Kung Fu Panda and the Legends of Awesomeness got five seasons, and that, that's based off at least some, uh, you know, uh, something. Legend of Korra does have its fan base and did complete out its series as well, but just was consi- most people agree it wasn't as good. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, sure. Monsters vs. Aliens, the series. Sanjay and Craig. Breadwinner's Heart. Pig, Goat, Banana. Cr- the more, like, the problem here is that all the stuff really just tailored itself more to just kitty kitty kids, and they didn't have, they weren't cranking out as much content. Now, go over to Cartoon Network. So let's start with Squirrel Boy. I didn't even know this was a. Th- oh God, I did not know this was a thing at all. And my guess is this. Is, yeah, it didn't last more than Class of Three Thousand. This lasted two seasons. I don't know anything about this. So. Class of 30,000, whatever. Chowder. So, so far, Nickelodeon might still be ahead. And Transformers Animated, you can compare this to the Ninja Turtles. Okay. But then you still had Ben 10 Alien Force. Okay. Fair enough. Ben 10 Alien Force. The Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack. Yeah, no. Nickelodeon still gets the lead. The Secret Saturdays. I don't even know what that is. It's a show that lasted two seasons, though. So, uh, oh, I remember that now. Uh, but then uh, Ben 10 Ultimate Alien. So I would again put uh, Ben 10 probably a bit more ahead of uh, Ner- Cartoon Network, a bit more ahead of the race at that point. Then you had Generator Rex. Then you had Adventure Time, the regular show. Symbiotic Titan. I remember that, but that sadly didn't go anywhere. Uh, Robot Anim- So So far, nothing is really helping Ben 10 Omniverse. Steven Universe is one of the most, bl- in terms of like, especially their, um, the way they. Um, their, their storytelling between Adventure Time and Steven Universe. Um, they, they, yeah, they they have um, they they are really are telling very mature stories within their shows, while wrapped in the uh, the fabric of wackiness. Uh, Powerpuff Girls got a relaunch reboot. We Bear Bears. I actually remember We Bear Bears. Mighty Magiswords. What the hell is Mighty Magiswords? Uh, I I do not know what that is. Okay, uh, okay, KO. Let's be heroes. Interesting. Uh, Summer Camp Isle, In- Infinity Train, and Steven Universe Future. Um, so, and that is pretty much the list. So, the problem here, ultimately for the long haul of this or debate and argument that we've been having and for the last 30 minutes, is I think Cartoon Network didn't start as strong overall as Nick to- as Nicktoons did. Now, their programming was jo- about as good. Like, with, again, Johnny Bravo, Dexter's Lab, and, like, Courage the Cowardly Dog. But the problem is that Cartoon Network just had more programming, and they had just more quality as a whole. Um, even though they definitely had some, some missed, op- missed marks, certainly. Once we get to about 2005, I'd put them close, but I might still put Nicktoons ahead overall in terms of how fun they are, the quality. However, that changes as you continue on with their legacy, because then Nicktoons, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, just continue to pander mostly to younger audiences. They they still pumped out a Legend of Korra. They still pumped out a... Um, uh, Winx Club, uh, they still pumped out a, every now and then, like a Kung Fu Panda, uh, but that's not even original content, that's just, per se, that's, you know, already may- own content that they pretty much acquired, kind of, uh, acquired the rights to be making those shows for Ninja Turtles, all of that, so, yeah, they, they had, could, they definitely had, um, had a few things, but in terms of what we know of the storytelling of the later shows in Cartoon Network, particularly with like a Steven Universe and Adventure Time, Steven Universe Future, Ben 10s, all of those. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a fan of the newest version of Ben 10, uh, that little like chibi version, but still, not chibi, but the, like the short version, like it's like set, like 10 to 6 minutes episode or whatever, 6 to 10 minutes episode. We Bear Bears, regular show. There are more... The, the quality and actual storytelling styles uh, definitely improved with Cartoon Network over time than it did with Nickelodeon, in my opinion. So, for the win, in my opinion, I am going with Cartoon Network. I think Cartoon Network overall, long-term, won the war. 
Uh, don't get me wrong, they still exist, and they will both still exist no matter what. So it's they're not hurting each other at all. Uh, I mean, they might be, but whatever. Um, th that's that's just healthy competition. Ultimately, though, that is just my opinion. I go Cartoon Network. Who do you ultimately think is the stronger in this scenario here? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Now, Star Chain, if you are do ever read this video, do let me know if this is what you wanted me to do or if you wanted me to put all their characters against each other. Um, uh, by, uh, by, uh, by the way, I'm also not even including um, uh, uh, Gravity Falls in this either. Uh, in fact, I think I completely forgot Gravity Falls, didn't I? Um, where Where is Gravity Falls in this? Now that I say it out loud. Because Gravity Falls was on Cartoon Network as well. Uh, cause, yeah, because if you were to... Because I'm, I'm, I'm saying that because if you put me up... Uh, if you were asking me to put all the characters... Uh, against each other from all the series, uh, then, yeah, uh, it, it, it's not going to matter because you have Bill Cipher, who's pretty much a reality-warping, you know, entity. I know Gravity Falls was Cartoon Network, wasn't it? Uh, Gravity Falls. Uh, Gravity Falls, American... De oh, no! I take it back. It wasn't. It was actually on Disney. How about that? <laughs> I could have sworn that Gravity Falls was on Cartoon Network. Uh, but no, I guess Gravity Falls was a Disney pro uh, uh, product. Okay. <laughs> you win this time, Disney. Anyway, I digress. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. This is a long one, but this is one of those ones where it was more like compare and contrast debate kind of thing. Uh, keep in mind, it is just all my opinion. If you disagree, that's cool. Uh, you may think Nickelodeon was overall better. Nicktoons were overall better. You may think that uh, Cartoon Network is better and agree with me. Either way, it's all good. Till then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you folks next time. 